In the rainforests of French Guiana, a worker termite is in trouble. An enemy has breached the nest. But this isn't just any termite. On its back, it carries two small blue crystals, almost like a tiny backpack. This isn't equipment. It's a part of its body, a feature that has been growing and intensifying with age. As the larger predator attacks, the termite does something extraordinary. It flexes its abdominal muscles with such force that its own body wall ruptures. The termite intentionally explodes, releasing a sticky, toxic substance all over the intruder, sacrificing itself in a single, terminal act of defense. This act of self-destruction is called autothysis. That blue backpack isn't one chemical, but two, kept separate in life. They are copper-containing protein crystals. When the termite's body tears open, these crystals mix with the contents of its salivary glands, creating a chemical reaction on the spot. The resulting cocktail is not just poisonous, it's incredibly sticky. It's a biological glue bomb. The goal isn't just to kill the immediate threat, but to physically gum up the works, entangling the enemy and perhaps its nearby companions, buying precious seconds for the colony to mount a larger defense. Suicidal altruism seems like an evolutionary paradox. How can a trait for self-destruction possibly be passed on? The answer requires you to stop seeing the termite as an individual. The true individual is the colony, the entire nest. Each worker termite is more like a single cell in your own body. Every day, your skin cells die and flake off to protect the organism underneath. Your immune cells will destroy themselves to trap a pathogen. From the perspective of the superorganism, the exploding termite isn't dying. The colony is simply shedding a specialized cell to repair a wound. This logic is formalized in a concept called kin selection. The workers in a termite colony are almost all sisters, sharing a vast majority of their genes. The biologist W.D. Hamilton proposed that an altruistic gene can spread if the benefit to relatives, weighted by their genetic relatedness, is greater than the cost to the individual. For a sterile worker termite, the cost of its own life is zero in reproductive terms. The benefit of saving the queen, the single reproductive engine of the colony, and hundreds of its sisters is immense. The math is brutal, and it always works in favor of the colony. What's fascinating is who becomes these living bombs. It's the older workers. As these termites age, their mandibles become worn and dull from a lifetime of chewing wood. They become less efficient at foraging and feeding the colony. Simultaneously, the blue toxic crystals on their backs become larger and more potent. Their role in the colony shifts. They transition from being blue-collar foragers to white-collar chemical weapon specialists. A final career change where their declining ability to work is replaced by an increasing capacity for defense. It's a pre-planned obsolescence with a heroic purpose. And this isn't a strategy unique to one species. In the treetops of Borneo, certain species of ants in the Colobopsis genus do something similar. When threatened, they can contract their bodies to rupture a massive mandibular gland that runs the length of their body, spraying a corrosive, sticky glue from their face. Elsewhere, you find door-headed ants, whose soldiers have evolved plate-shaped heads that function as living doors, perfectly plugging the nest entrances. Extreme self-sacrifice for the colony is not a fluke. It's a recurring, successful answer to the question of survival, an example of convergent evolution in social insects. The genes that code for this explosive vest aren't in the termite that dies. They are safe and sound, deep inside the nest, within the queen. The queen is the germline, the genetic legacy.
The workers are her soma, the disposable body. They are essentially remote-controlled survival machines built by her DNA. Their individual survival is irrelevant so long as the information, the genes, that built them gets passed on. The worker's body is just a temporary vehicle for a genetic strategy that has proven successful for millions of years. So, when you see a single termite explode, what are you actually witnessing? Is it the death of an organism? Or is it more like a scab forming on a wound, a fever breaking? The behavior of these insects forces us to question our fundamental definition of an individual. Perhaps the real individual is the mound, a sprawling, decentralized intelligence processing the world through thousands of tiny, disposable sensors. The termite is not the life form. The termite is a single thought, and the colony is the mind. Monotony has grown fast. Nearly 2,700 people have watched in the last few weeks, yet less than 0.03% are subscribed. It would mean a lot if you joined by hitting subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.